Hi, David Bizard here, and you are watching Paratech 10. This edition of Paratech 10, or episode, will be number 41, and it's part two of our What's New for 22. As you can see, this all here might just give you a hint. We're talking induction systems. That's manifolds, carburetors, and fuel injection. So, let me give you a quick rundown on what you're likely to see. Here's one of my mule motors. This is a 306, it's nicely built. As you'll see, it's equipped with a Edelbrock RPM performer. The Ford version of this, I can tell you, is an excellent manifold, but it could benefit for some improvement in the flow of the runners. Let me show you what I'm doing here. Here we have a performer sword and a half. Let me uh, just turn this around. These are the flow numbers with its stock and as you can see here's a quick look into the other half of the uh, two-plane manifold. Let me just turn it over a bit here so that I can hold it. You'll see that where the arrow is, it sweeps around that corner a lot better. It's a long way shy of being finished yet, but hey, we're getting there. Yes, sure, Holly is the name in corporation, but as time has gone on, many people have taken the hint that this format of carburetor is pretty good. So we're not only gonna look at just Holly carburetors, such as this one here, but also quick fuel carburetors, AED carburetors, the new Edelbrock carburetor, and several other new brands that have come into being. This was designed by a friend of mine in Australia, Terry Parker. It's called a funnel web, strange name, but Funnel Web is the name of a deadly spider. I guess this is spider-like, and it's deadly. I had a hand, along with my friend Roger Dr. Air Helgeson, in designing this. What we did was we advised Terry what and how to do things. Unfortunately, time delays uh, meant that what he produced was actually about one or two steps shy of what we were recommending. Now, in the form that you can get this, it's about the best manifold for top-end power on the market. But it's not so good on torque. So, I'm gonna show you how to fix that. Once this is fixed, it makes the best torque and the best horsepower. And the beauty of it is the fix makes these runners look about an inch longer. So there's much nearer, same length, and the energy content of all the runners goes up. It's a win-win situation. You've probably seen this manifold a number of times in the background. Uh, I started working on this some time ago, but unfortunately medical situations uh, prevented me from getting any further than you see here. What is it you see here? Well, first off, it's thermally controlled. Everything under there is insulating foam, high temperature insulating foam, right? So the heat doesn't come through the manifold. It's coated in here, and it's been reworked and port matched to a pair of cylinder heads that's gonna go on the engine. One of the tests we can do with this is we can put two four barrel carburetors on, or two four bar barrel throttle body fuel injection units on and use the fuel injection here. So we'll have a definitive back-to-back -back test. Now let's talk a bit about carburetors. I have to say some of my uh, carburetor material that I'm uh, putting on here is very much inspired by Uncle Tony. If you haven't visited Uncle Tony's website, do so. The guy is as industrious as you can imagine. He has new stuff up probably every two or three days. 
Anyway, one of the things he's been talking about recently is high mileage, high efficiency carburetors. And he poses the question, does the 30 mile, does the 100 mile per gallon carburetor actually exist? Well, I was about to agree with him and he's fundamentally right. But I then realized that I had been the chief engineer on a car which had a carburetor which allowed it to do 100 miles per gallon. And the carburetor is one that you could, if you wanted to, look around on a European car junks yard site, pick up the essence of that carburetor, needed to be mod modified, and build one at home. But it's more than just a carburetor. Oh, by the way, the car involved would seat four people, right? Have I got any proof that it did 100 miles per gallon? Yes, it was tested by two engineering journalists at the Motor uh, Industry Research Association at Lindley in Coventry. This is for people who work in the industry at factories that are licensed to use it. I was not, so I couldn't go in, not even in through the gate. So this test was a completely independent deal got 100 miles per gallon and it was raining so you'll I'll be talking all about that and how there's a lot of people out there claim 100 miles per gallon but let me tell you it's BS discussion of, uh, uh, about mixture quality at the carburetor and in the ports of the running engine, I was reminded of a story. A few years ago, Kevin Gertgen from Performance Trends told me a story that, about the time he spent uh, when he was an engineer at the Ford Motor Company. They were working on the development of the variable Venturi two-barrel carburetor. The idea being that the air would be near sonic velocity through the carburetor. This would break up the fuel in smaller droplets and it would be better able to follow the intake manifold. To reduce In order to verify this, they had a 351 Windsor engine on the dyno that was sitting there running and, and they had uh, windows machined into the intake manifold. So you could look inside the port and see what the fuel was doing in the actual running engine. What they found with the stock Ford Motorcraft 2 barrel that the engine seemed to run normally, but the fuel was running down the uh, inside of the runners, kind of like small rivers. Next, the variable Venturi carburetor was installed in place of the Ford Motorcraft two barrel. And what they found when they looked into the runners was very interesting. It was almost exact. What you see here is one of the fanciest cool cans on the market. Yes, you can actually do this fuel cooling with a can and some copper bar, copper tube, right? This here is a technically top-notch uh, piece. We've used this Moroso cool can to control the fuel temperature with a, a feedback system from the float bowls so that we could deliver the fuel and have it in the float bowls at a fixed temperature within plus or minus two degrees. That was one of our research projects. So you'll get to learn all about that. Now, what else do I have? Oh, let's just put that down there. What else do I have to uh, amuse you guys with? Um, I think I'm getting to the end of the list that I can think of, but certainly by no means the end of the list. Uh, we're going to have um, plug reading and why it's okay and not okay at the same time. We are going to look at stagger jetting to uh, even out fuel distribution, especially on two-plane manifolds. We are going to look at port venting 
to uh, again to help even out fuel distribution and uh, uh, quite a few other things in terms of uh, measuring the mixture what it needs to be and what the signs of the um, measurements we can get on the dyno indicate oh and the last thing is I'm going to go through the tuning order that needs to be done when you're setting up your motor on the dyno. I see this done incorrectly so many times and it's n not amateurs doing it. It is guys that are professional and run big number subscription uh, websites on engine performance. So those guys take notice of what I've got to say. Anyway, that's about all I've got on this uh, part two. So please subscribe, uh, at like, and uh, ring that not notification bell so that you can find out when all this happens. Thank you for listening.